Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. Today I'm going to be doing some T4 Abyss. And there's a particular reason I want to do some T4 Abyss. It's because I have lost a lot of isk. Well, I've not lost a lot of isk to being like killed a lot, but I've had to spend a lot of isk making cruisers for the new Abyss PvP feature they released. So for you guys who do not know, there are these kind of filaments you can buy in the store or if from Abyss sites that you can get these TV 2v2 cruiser brawls so you can fight like two cruisers versus two cruisers and the problem here is that when I was buying these cruisers they're so expensive because guess what all the cruisers have gone up in price by a crazy amount so if we go here for example to the, to the Mauler you know a Mauler usually costs I don't know eight nine mil something like that it's not at all a lot but let's see now 37 mil wow look at that 37 mil for just a Mauler okay let's check out the Mauler then 27 mil for more like right? this is the prices have like tripled overnight it's like crazy and i don't understand how they could have just increased in price like that well i do understand it's because of this cruiser fight but it's just like i would have never expected it to increase this much in price so i went from like uh, 800 mil to 640 mil in a very short amount of time and I want to get back up to one bill because that's where I wanted to keep my wallet. There's something cool about having that one bill in your wallet. I think that's I like the, those numbers. It looks it look, looks aesthetically pleasing numbers. <laughs> it doesn't really exactly mean much, but it also feels comfortable to have that kind of buffer. For example, if I want to buy something, recently I bought this um, this Hawk ship here to be able to run frigate abyss, and it's all right. But the bad thing about it is that compared to the Retribution, the Hawk doesn't have much DPS. It has about 200 DPS, so it's got a really good range, 49 kilometer range, 200 DPS. But the problem is that it's like even at short range. So we we'll say you've killed everything that's at long range, so you only got a battleship left that you can easily orbit at 500. It's going to take a long time to go through those, so it's a lot slower than the Retribution, which is why I prefer much the Retribution in the Abyss to the um uh, hawk but the hawk is still very reliable because it's very tanky with the shield boost amount but what we'll be doing to get the isk back is uh, t4 abyss actually t4 abysses are good because you can run relatively cheap ships in them so less risk that you get ganked and also it makes so that i can then run them in, in jita which is really convenient because you're right next to the trade hub so you can just sell your wares straight away it's just really convenient so you can see here i'm running electricals Electrical is important because I want to be able to have a camp stability in the abyss. I've said this many times before where you can have um, cheaper tank modules at the expense of less capacitor mods. So because of how good the capacitor is in electrical sites. So that's the reason why I like to run electrical sites. Otherwise we'd have to upgrade our tank modules a lot and use a lot more uh, cap modules for cap stability because for you guys who don't know, no, cap stability is really important in the abyss. You want to have a good cap stability. A cap battery is almost mandatory because you want to have that innate cap resist neutralizing resistance. And let's see if we can get some good isk from this side because um, I've uh, I've done a few. I've well, I've done one today and and a few the other day. And it, the isk wasn't that good. I haven't been getting so much as I usually do. Usually what I consider a good run is 40 mil or more. So it's uh, that's like my goal. 40 mil or more per per run or per site is what I consider to be a very good, a good amount. So let's see what first wave we get in here. If it's going to be a difficult wave, easy wave. None of the waves are really hard for my healer because my healer is a boss healer that can do this very in a very relaxation manner which is really nice because i don't want to have to be stressing out all the time over doing my abyss size but then there's also a bit of it can get a bit repetitive and boring and that's true that is the case but i'd rather that than to have to be stressing out about it a lot uh you i could for example do the retribution abysses in the t2s and it'll give uh, a slightly less similar isk to this, but slightly less. Obviously using a lot cheaper ship, but it's a lot more things you have to think about in those sites. Like you have to keep your distance, you have to really have your eyes peeled because one mistake can cost you your ship and that is not something you do not want to have. Reliability is a very important factor in farming sites or farming content in the online. If you want to get that consistent isk power. I mean, I'm always talking about consistent isk power. I think that's a really important thing when you are talking about income because often people will go on about how they 
like uh, they do the exploration runs and they get like oh look I just did this site it's only five minutes and I got 100 mil from it okay let's see now I got 1.2 bill is per hour because that's uh, 10 minutes right and 100 mil right so mathematically it's going to be that much but now nah, that's not the case I, I'm talking about it's important that and it's making activity is very consistent and that's why I like the abyss because you always get a certain consistency the thing is abyss is also quite random like you can always get like very varied amounts but it's still somewhat consistent at least much more consistent to exploration otherwise I think exploration is a pretty good alternative to the abyss I mean it is uh, it can give you this and it is and it's also got a lot lower bar of entry so yeah and it's also quite interesting you know avoiding people who potentially can kill you but that's as well another thing that it's a lot less consistent because if you get killed for example when you're exploring then it can be first of all you lose everything that you've gathered and then also you know the ship if you're not unless, assuming you're not running a completely noob t1 ship that doesn't cost anything it's gonna you know cost you a lot of cash so how this all started when I was deciding to run Abyss today was that I was having a shower and it, I'm a hardcore guy actually. I am a pretty hardcore guy who has cold showers, really cold showers. I max out the, uh, the coldness or the cold side of the shower knob so I twist it all the way to the right which is the coldest you can get and uh, that's how I roll, that's how I roll and I think a good thing about that actually is that you, uh, I would strongly recommend for you guys to try it at least. And apparently, men have a lot easier time actually uh, doing having cold showers than women. Apparently, women have a, like a, a lot more sensitive skin, so which is a reason women will tend to have a harder time doing it. So definitely, for men out there, probably only men watching this anyway, <laughs> uh, you should test out having a cold shower. When I've had a cold shower, I usually feel really fresh afterwards. Really fresh. It's like. A, it's a very uh, euphoric feeling you have afterwards and it has something to do with that when you have this kind of cold stimulation it kind of releases, uh, releases chemicals in your body that make you feel good. Uh, I am a medical student by the way. <laughs> uh, and uh, the th you feel really fresh afterwards. Also the, uh, the, the main reason I started to do it nowadays is because um, like my skin it feels really fresh my face especially feels really fresh like it's really if you if you're having like a, especially now in the summer you know how it's like really hot having a cold shower can really make your skin feel really relaxed and fresh i think uh, I, don't know, I don't know exactly why that's the case but it's the feeling i at least get when doing it so i'd strongly recommend you guys to do that have the cold shower so when i was having this cold shower then uh, I decided that, okay, there's a, um, I noticed that my wallet is not at one bill. So I really wanted to get my wallet back to one bill because, um, you know, I, it's, it's, it's annoying to not see that one bill. So I don't want to see it again. I've been many times, you know, going back to 800 mil, 900 mil, then going down maybe to 700 mil, then going up to 7, 900 mil. But it never seems to be able to consistently stay at the, at the one bill level. That's what I want to do. I want to make that the new standard. You know, I'm always seeing that my wallet is at the 6, 700 range, sometimes 800, sometimes even 900, but it's never staying at the one bill range. And as I told you guys before, it's, one bill is something I think that is a kind of comfortable level where you can buy almost anything you want if there happens to be a purchase you want to make. Mm, so that's definitely something I want to achieve at least. Uh, the one, one thing I'm thinking of buying is actually a Marauder, but I've never really bought, wanted to buy a Marauder because of how expensive they are. But, but I mean, I, I've wanted to, but I've not actually gone through with it because of how expensive they are. You can see here, Vila Vedmax, they are very dangerous for frigates, but for us as a cruiser, no problem because these guys hardly do any damage. Yeah, I think Marauders are really cool ships and they could be quite quite cool uses in L formations, especially with their micro jump drive bonus. They can use their micro jump drives to jump really far distances and it's really uh, useful for missions as well as their boss tank and boss DPS and boss range as well. So they're pretty good L formation runners, but the Rattlesnake I use is pretty good as well. Uh, so it's not going to be much of a uh, it's not going to be much of an upgrade if any in some missions because the rattlesnake is got really good range as well with the cruise missile launches as well as crazy amounts of damage and tank but i think marauder is just cool but it's just unfortunate that they cost so much i wish they cost less because they are seriously really cool ships also another thing that i wish cost less are skins for the marauders because i really hate how ccp decided to remove many skins from the new eden store because uh, there are so many skins I really like. Like I really like, especially the Serpentis skins and the EOM skins. 
those are two skins uh, types I really like a lot. And it's unfortunate that those were all removed, or most of them at least, were removed from the New Eden store. I really don't like it how they did that, because I was actually not even playing when they removed the EOM skins from the store. What they did was, they made it so that, um, so that the, uh, the skins went for a certain price, like a uh, discount. So... And then they, you know, released them for this discount, and then they had it start, okay, after this discount sale or season or whatever they were calling it, it's done, then we're going to permanently remove them. And that is quite sad, quite sad, I must say, because it's really annoying, you know, seeing a skin in the shit game and not being able to use it, it's, it's, it's quite sad. And I understand they want to have some kind of rarity to skins, but it's very unfortunate to players who didn't play then who just want to have their ship look a certain way. And it's, oh, that was a big hit right there. Take a bit of the boosting right there. Overheat this stuff. Hey, you know, you want to be careful when they've got the Caribbean Tyrannosaurus Rex, you know. You want to always be careful when he's on the case, you know, because he can do those sick wrecking shots that can almost one-shot a shield like that. You want to be careful, you know. You want to be really careful. And I'm guessing we've got 70%. No, oh, we had 50%. So if this was 70%, actually, let's see now. Utilities, logs, messages. If this was a, if this was a seventy percent EM, EM uh, site, then we could maybe have lost our ship there. Actually, hmm. Well, that's something to always think about. You know, you want to have a bigger, decent buffer for these kind of off uh, racket, wrecking shots. You know, wrecking shots are a big problem in the abyss, especially from Caribbean Tyrannus, because I've noticed that he has a pretty remove commander from over here. I don't want to see that. Uh, Karebdis Tyrannus has a very high likelihood to land Wrecking Shots and that's really annoying because Wrecking Shots do crazy amounts of damage compared to a normal shot and Karebdis has a very high volley damage so like a damage at once it's not like he does it over time so that's a pretty um, annoying thing because you can potentially lose all your shields just like that and that is something you do not want to happen definitely do not want to happen you can go and keep range on Charybdis Tyrannus here because we want to, you know, be in range of our light missiles. Light missiles are what constitutes most of our missile damage, but they're on re they're soon on reload. So actually, in actuality, you probably really wouldn't matter that much. Our heavy missiles have got a really good range, so they can hit the Charybdis or whatever. So it's not a big deal here. We see that we've got a little orange cloud, and we want to watch out for this because, especially when you're, when you're in shield boosting ships, because your shield boosters was used a lot more capacitor. I got a drone's a crib distance, shouldn't be much uh, more of a trouble right there. Yeah, sometimes I like to just go a little bit forward and like a little bit more towards the game. I just follow the bands, you know, I just like to go a little bit back and forward. Um, let's do you know, let's go into logs and see, because I'm curious now. Let's just keep a range of this guy at 25. Just, just, okay, let's see now. When did. So it was the Vila Swarmers here. We want to go up a bit until we see Caribbis' wrecking shot. I want to see how much damage they do. Wrecking shots can do like two to three times more damage than a normal shot. That's how I think it is. Okay, let's go. penetrate, hits, penetrate, hits. Let's see now. Let's go down a bit. No, okay, so I need to make sure my shield has not gone down a bit. There we go. There's the shot here. 3,000 damage. Oof, that was a big hit right there. That's almost all our all our shield capacity right there. We have four thousand shield capacity, three thousand. If we do do a bit of quick math, you know, if we if um, our, our EM resistance is twelve uh, percent uh, right now, if we were to okay, that's not actually going to be quick math. You have to, have to do a lot of things with that. I'm not going to bother with it right now. <laughs> but uh, we have only twelve percent EM resistance, so if we were to remove that in a seventy percent minus. Uh, so it'll probably be zero percent uh, EM resistance, and that could, you know, potentially be mean the end of us. If actually, uh, maybe it will, but it'll be slightly, only slightly greater in the EM seventy percent EM site. It wouldn't be that much. But let's see. You know, what do we get here? We got only thirty six mil here, and that's not really that good. We got these brawling cruisers. It's not really brawling actually, because many times people, you know, use kite stuff there. But anyway, let's go and go out of the Origin Conduit. We can't see any Proven Conduits now, so I'm not sure if they remove them or they're just 
not enough players. I'm pretty sure they've removed them actually since the new Abyss stuff. And I like that because I don't like to have to always worry about taking the wrong gate. That's a big thing. And I'm glad that they've re if removed that if they actually have. That's it for this video, guys. I'm trying to get myself to one build isk right now. Hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, please leave a like, leave a like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys later.